As far as I know, I was not an unbright child, but I do recall at a quite late date coming to the realization that the place is mentioned in the Bible, Galilee, Ur of the Chaldeans, Bethlehem, weren't made up places. That Israel wasn't like Narnia, a mythical place written into being to be the backdrop for a heroic story. Am I the only one? Hello again. Just a brief video today, hopefully, uh, as I have not yet gotten my voice entirely back. And just quick public service announcement. Uh, I understand there's something going around out there. So wash your hands. Um, observe proper hygiene and etiquette. Keep yourself safe. Now, all the uh, introductory uh, material at the beginning of this video, in which I uh, unwisely describe my own ignorance as a child, uh, is unfortunately all true. I do recall at a um, much older than you would expect age, uh, suddenly realizing that all the place names, all the places described in the Bible, uh, all the stories I heard in Sunday school, uh, were of actual places that actually exist on a map or did at one time. Uh, and as I said in that introductory material, I'm, I wasn't a particularly unbright child. Uh, certainly I had access to maps, right? I had a globe on my dresser. Um, I was in school, so I, I was learning and geography and... Uh, social studies and all of that. Um, maybe I'm the only kid like that. I, I don't know, but uh, it was kind of a revelation to me. And uh, thinking back on that, I started thinking, what is it that makes a good children's Bible? And what I'm going to look at today, <laughs> excuse me, is not that. This is... Um, a Bible that I think would have been useful for me and interesting to me, uh, but I don't believe was marketed to children. So what we're looking at today is the Good News translation, or Good News for Modern Man, or uh, today's English version. It went by several different names, and I have this really delightfully colored early 70s edition. It's built like a school textbook, the kind you check out at the beginning of the, the uh, year and it's already been used by a generation of kids before you got it. Uh, so built to last, uh, has head and tail bands. It may be sewn, it's really hard to tell, um, but certainly built to take abuse and just the coloring and everything like that uh, really invites you to to take a look at it, but I don't think this was geared toward children, uh, but maybe it should have been. Uh, maybe this would have kept me from falling victim to the ignorance that uh, uh, plagued me as a child in, in not realizing that the places of the Bible were actual places. So uh, if they still make books like this, I'm not aware of it, <clears throat> but they should. I know they make study Bibles that are uh, geared toward kind of archaeological things and uh, history and such, and we'll have pictures like this. Uh, most of them tend to be lots and lots of pictures, <coughs> excuse me, of rubble and broken columns, um, piles of, uh, you know, the detritus of some long lost civilization in the desert, which is fine. Uh, but these are the things that interest me, like this piece of a coin here. Um, a coin from the time of King Herod the Great, ruler of Roman-controlled Palestine, when Jesus was born. They're tying these biblical stories to actual historical figures, 
actual places that you could point to on an ancient map or a modern day map. Uh, pictures from the Sea of Galilee, these uh, interesting uh, sculptures and artworks from uh, biblical times. And it's uh, throughout like this. I also like the layout of this uh, uh, Good News Bible. These really big kind of section headings off to the left so you can keep track of what you're looking at really easily. Very much like a textbook. And I kind of like that layout. Um, just really well done. I found this at a local thrift um, many months ago. And they stuff everything in a paper bag and pay four bucks or something for the bag. There's another coin, Tiberius Caesar. Just to get a, f a feel for the flavor of the Good News translation for those who are not familiar, perhaps. Let's go to a familiar passage. Let's go Matthew 11. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. The yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. So is this the kind of uh, Bible that a kid ought to have uh, as a first Bible or as an early introduction to Scripture? Maybe so. Maybe this would have been um, something I would have gotten into. I, I think I probably would have. I think it's neat now. Uh, I may hang on to this one. Because um, I think it's so uh, so interesting. It has a lot of material in it. I appreciate how at the end here we have a list of alternate readings. It's like a little glossary. Uh, but other readings and renderings. So, if you're studying a passage of Scripture, you can see uh, other ways that has been translated. And then an index at the end. Um, really beautifully done. If you can get past the, uh, kind of the period-specific coloration, the bright, uh, I rather like it, but uh, maybe this would have kept me from the error of assuming the things I was learning in Sunday school were talking about a place that uh, was like Narnia. Uh, just a fictional setting for a morality tale. I'm embarrassed to admit that, but um, yeah, I think they ought to make more like this. Uh, so i open for discussion in the comments, I guess. What is it you think makes a good... Bible for children. And so while we're on the subject of the Good News translation, I picked up a few other Bibles in that translation from local thrift shops. I believe I got this one at a Goodwill in their free Bible stack at the register. It's a Nelson-produced Catholic Study Edition with Deuterocanonicals has the imprimatur um, Archbishop John Whelan. <coughs> Excuse me. What I found interesting is it's geared toward Catholics, and yet they have the um, Deuterocanonicals, what we call the Apocrypha, I guess, in this lump in between, I believe. I don't think they're arranged the way they are in, say, the Dewey Reams or New American Bible. I think they're stuck in the middle here. Uh, this particular edition has the at least some of the uh, simple pen and ink illustrations that are so interesting in these 
Good News Translation Bibles. I like those a lot. Uh, I think Joe St. Egg Benedictus has covered those pretty well, but not really a children's Bible, although look at that funky color. Um, but still, simple illustrations just to kind of tie it to the page. I like that. And then this one also has the um, Apocrypha, Deuterocanonicals. This is American Bible Society publication. Uh, this one goes by Today's English, but also mentions it's the Good News Bible. And this one has head and tail bands, but I think it's still a glued binding. Uh, this almost looks like uh, Pew Bible material. Uh, this one I don't think has any of the illustrations at all that I've been able to find. So just the text, uh, but uh, the translation is the Good News Bible, and uh, I rather like it for a simple translation. Um, so a couple varieties of this. There's an endless variety of these Good News translations that you can find. Um, I was unaware of this as a child, this translation. Our church, it was the King James or the NIV because... If you were reading the NIB, at least you weren't reading the Living Bible or something equally heretical. Uh, so this is this was a new one to me to discover kind of recently, and I kind of like it. Uh, not for my main everyday Bible, but uh, uh, still not a bad translation. Easy reading. So anyway, thanks for joining me today at this brief cough-interrupted look at the good news for Modern Man Translation. And again, uh, let me know what you think makes a good Bible for a young person, for a child. Um, be interested to hear it. And maybe I'll see you again here next time.